Good day to you all, ladies and gentlemen. Made for TV movies based on real life crimes have somehow become a staple on my channel, and today's review is no different as we were talking about a 1989 NBC movie based on the awful crimes of two scumbags. I am Torstein from Cinema Terror, and this is The Case of the Hillside Stranglers. 1978. Only five short months, ten young women were brutally tortured, violated, and murdered. Their stripped bodies were dumped on hillsides northeast of downtown Los Angeles. The city was in a state of shock, and the murders came to be known as the Hillside Stranglings. If you are unfamiliar with the case, then a quick rundown is that the Hillside Stranglers were two idiot cousins named Kenneth Bianchi and Angelo Buono. The two of them haunted Los Angeles with a murder spree back in 1977 and 1978, kidnapping, assaulting, and dumping the bodies of young women in the hills surrounding the city before the reign of terror was put to a stop in 1979. The news attention serial killers got during the later years of the 70s and during the 80s made grisly killers like these two guys and others nearly into celebrities, and of course that ended with several of the stories being made into books and movies, with the majority being made specifically for television during this time. I have covered several on my channel already, including movies about Ted Bundy, Richard Ramirez, and most recently Out of Darkness, which is about David Berkowitz, otherwise known as the Son of Sam. Most of these television productions are similar in that they are made from the perspectives of the detectives that hunt these sadistic killers down, and the case of the Hillside Stranglers does the very same. The main character here is not one of the murderers, but rather Officer Bob Grogan, portrayed by Richard Crenna. Grogan is played as a charming, hard-working cop who struggles with his marriage and setting aside his work to spend time with his family. The window she says she was looking out of is a good 30 feet from the street, where she said she saw the guys force the girl into the car. Now, it's not too well lit. And she's got bad eyesight. But she's certain she could identify the guys in the seventh girl, right? Oh, yeah. If a dog was barking outside the house, and she was inside the house, how could she hear the girl screaming? Although, after a while he meets a woman named JD, played by Karen Austin, and he seems to get plenty of spare time to develop a relationship with her after leaving his wife for good. He also asks her out after interviewing her when she reports a potential crime that could have been done by the Hillside Stranglers, but ended up being an unrelated incident. A bit morally questionable, but Krenna and Austin does have chemistry together, so the relationship works okay even though it seems to mainly be included due to delivering exposition to the audience, and also takes way too much time away from the actual case, and might leave some wanting the story to rather go on instead of spending time with these two lovebirds. While Krenna was the right actor for the job, I would have liked us to see the effect the case had on him even more, although I do recognize that they were attempting to show that, they just didn't succeed well enough in doing so. Krenna is not the only familiar face in the film, as he is joined by several others that many will recognize. A young Billy Zane plays Kenneth Bianchi, the youngest of the murderers, and he is the one out of the two that gets the most depth to his character. Saint takes advantage of every minute on screen and is able to show his talents there, maybe even enough that he potentially had a part in him landing his breakthrough role a year later in Dead Calm. Drove, he was a nice guy. And I asked him to show me some of the dump spots where the hillside strangler dumped their bodies, I said. But he said that was up to Hannes. Hello? Don't do that. Crazy idiot. His partner in crime is played by Dennis Farina. He doesn't get that much to work with, but he's still able to come off as a creep and is always a nice addition to any cast. A fun trivia is that Farina actually spent 18 years as a police officer in Chicago. Zane and Farina works well together, but I do think there was more to explore about the relationship and how they started doing all of those demented acts. It would also help the movie if they postponed their arrest a little bit longer, as the movie sort of flats out after Bianchi is put behind bars, awaiting trial. It is understandable that a TV movie like this wanted to shy away from the more gory details regarding the evil stuff that it did, but by doing so, it also takes some power, if you will, away from it if you look at it simply from a cinematic viewpoint. The task of both writing and directing this film went to experienced television writer and occasionally director Steve Getters. He had been working since the 1950s, and this was one of his last projects before he passed away in December of 1989. The script was based on the book Two of a Kind, The Hillside Stranglers by Darcy O'Brien, and even though I had not read that one, I'm going on an assumption that Gathers took all the information from that book and looked at this as just work. It does a competent job, but there is no special creativity or flair to be found there, which by all means is not something you can expect from a TV movie with average of its time television production values. I really can't see very much, Kenny. Yeah, well, let me fix that for you. 
There aren't that many movies based on the Hillside Stranglers, but if you really want to find more, then the 2000s will be the decade for you to explore more takes on this awful case. There was another TV movie in 2001 simply called The Hillside Stranglers, another movie with the same title came out 3 years later in 2004, and the final one that I know of was called Rampage, The Hillside Strangler Murders and came out in 2006. And no, I have not watched any of them, yet at least. When it comes to this one, the case of the Hillside Stranglers, I think it can be worth your time if you have an affinity for 80s made for TV movies based on the infamous crimes of the time. That's a very specific crowd, and I doubt they will do much for anyone else. Well, maybe except the fans of Billy Zane. With a talented cast and a horrible story to base the movie on, I must admit I was hoping for a bit more. The case of the Hillside Stranglers ends up right in the middle of my rating scale, and with that said, I'm giving this one a decent 2.5 out of 5. Have you seen this one or any other other movies based on the Hillside Stranglers? What are your thoughts on any of them? Let me and others know in the comment section below. As I mentioned earlier, I have several other videos that are also based on real life cases like this one, and my most recent one is Out of Darkness about the Son of Sam, so if you like this video, then make sure to check that one out as well. And subscribe to keep yourself updated on all of my future work, which definitively will include more similar made for TV movies like this one coming soon here on Cinema Terror. Thank you for watching.